Good evening, friends, and welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. We are retired New York City police detectives and 9-11 World Trade Center first responders. If you like all things true crime related from the police detective's perspective, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so you'll get all things Duty Ron and the birthday boy right over here, Ed Wallace, when we go live or upload another video. Hey, tonight we want to talk to you guys about Michelle Traconis found guilty on all charges <clears throat> in the Jennifer Dulos conspiracy murder trial. I'm going to put it on the screen, guys. There it is. Traconis verdict. Guilty of conspiracy to commit murder. Guilty of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical, physical evidence. Guilty of tampering with physical evidence. Guilty of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence, guilty of tampering with physical evidence, and guilty of hindering the prosecution. Ed, uh, I got to go right over to you on this because you have been watching this case as close as anybody that's out there. You've been on it day in and day out, and we've been covering this thing uh, up and down from the forensic standpoint to legal standpoints. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you watched happen today in Connecticut. A very diligent jury did their jobs and justice was uh, served today. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I had no doubt she was guilty. And uh, maybe later in the show, I'll give you my theory about how all this went down. She was definitely a party to it. Absolutely. And before we get started on the video, we want to say thank you to the Patreon supporters, the channel members, the replay viewers, the moderators, the folks who send us super chats and super thanks, who buy me cups of coffee, everyone who supports us by leaving comments down below in the comment section. You guys are what makes it a great place. Ed and I give thanks and praise. And heck, we're here on what would usually be a forensic Friday on Ed Wallace's birthday. Today is his birthday. So happy birthday, it's birthday. brother. It's my birthday. I, I want to wish you uh, many, many more healthy and happy birthdays. And we are so honored and proud that you are here with us on your birthday night. I said to Ed, why don't we just take a break? And he's like, oh, are you kidding me? Michelle Traconis was just found guilty on six charges all across the board. We got to go live. So mm -hmm. thank you, for that, Ed. Happy no, birthday. No worries, man. It was like watching... I, you know, all I can hear in the back of my head was like Howard Cosell back in the day. Down goes Frazier. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I did because I, I had this sense of arrogance and entitlement in her person, in her persona. Okay. And, and um, I mean, it was, when she heard that first guilty, she, she nearly collapsed. Yeah. She she started to lean on the female defense attorney, and then she went to Mr. Schoenhorn, and she was leaning on him. Why don't we go right to it and cut to the chase and let everybody see the moment of tr truth that happened just a little bit after 11 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time here. So we'll go live into the, well, we'll go to the courtroom. This is a live replay of the verdict being read, uh, and just keep a close eye on Michelle. Ah, oh, and look at what I did. Put it all the way back. I'm good for that. Oh. On the stream. Four person, please rise and identify himself. Everyone else can sit, have a seat. Will the defendant, Michelle Traconis, please rise and face the jury? In file number FST CR 2002411178T. State of Connecticut versus Michelle Traconis. What say you, Mr. Foreperson? Is she guilty or not guilty of the first count of the information charging the defendant with conspiracy to commit murder in violation of Connecticut General Statutes, Section 53A, 48A, and 53A-54A, subsection A? Guilty. Guilt what say you, Mr. Foreperson? Is she guilty or not guilty on the second count of the information to the charge of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence in violation of Connecticut General Statutes, Section 53A-155, Subsection A, Subsection 1? Guilty. What say you, Mr. Foreperson? Is she guilty or not guilty on the third count of the information to the charge of tampering with physical evidence in violation of Connecticut General Statutes, Section 53A, 
dash eight, subsection A. Guilty. What say you, Mr. Four person? Is she guilty or not guilty on the fourth count of the information to the charge of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence in violation of Connecticut General Statutes, section 53A-48, subsection A, and 53A-155, subsection A, subsection one? Guilty. What say you, Mr. Four person? Is she guilty or not guilty on the fifth count of the information? the charge of tampering with physical evidence in violation of Connecticut General Statutes in 53A-8, subsection A. Guilty. What say you, Mr. Four person? Is she guilty or not guilty on the fifth count of the information to the charge of hindering prosecution in the second degree in violation of Connecticut General Statutes, section 53A-165, subsection A? Now she's leaning on the... Yeah. Male attorney. Uh, she's Sean got Moore. her head buried in his shoulder, and she's holding on to his arm. And this female uh, defense attorney it was rubbing her back like the whole time, the whole entire time. She never stopped. Mm -hmm. A subsection three and fifty three A dash one six six. Guilty. You ladies are. I'm sorry, one moment. All right, I'm not going to let the rest of this play, but I'm definitely going to fast forward it to when they put her in handcuffs because that's, to me, that's the best part of the whole thing. Can I just say something here? Yeah, of course. Let me bring you back on. Folks, if you didn't see this, the, the lead defense attorney gets up and asks to poll the jury. So yeah. what, is, what ends up happening is she has to hear guilty to all six counts from six individuals after they just said they sent the note out to the judge and said they had a unanimous decision uh, and they came out, they gave, it was unanimous guilt through all six counts. And then she had to sit there again and, and listen to each and every juror tell her she was guilty of each of the six counts. Yeah, he could have skipped that, uh, taking into account, and I know legally, for whatever reason, it, it gets done. He didn't have to do that. It, it gets he, done probably 75% of the time, Ed. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. He definitely didn't have to do it there. He saw that his client was in distress, and he still just went through the motions and did it. But you know what? I, I have to say, I I was actually smiling when he did that. I said to myself, here you go. Here's a more, here, here's another bowl of wrong that, you know, you got to, you got to drink the soup. So look, I, there's no, I don't feel certain. I know you don't either, but, but that's the thing is that she's feel sorry for herself because she's an entitled wealthy person who thought she was going to walk out of that courtroom that, you know, daddy was going to pay for the most expensive attorney who, in my eyes, sucked um, most of the expensive attorney. And he's going to get up and he's going to talk me out of this whole thing. And I'm just going to walk out of here just like I enjoyed my bond during the course of this five years that it took for this trial to commence. And she and, traveled with an ankle bracelet around the country. Right. Okay, you know, She wasn't denied movement. But they okay. couldn't come up with that six million dollar bond tonight. Who knows? This family, I don't, you know, know how wealthy her family, her side of family is. But the dad is is a is a doctor. Um, who knows? Maybe they will come up with it on Monday or Tuesday, and she'll be out. House arrest. There's a bunch of stipulations that the district attorney, thank God, asked for. She spoke up. But let's go to the juicy part. And by a show of hands in the chat. How many of you guys enjoyed seeing the cuffs getting clicked on her? I personally did because she was found guilty by a jury of her peers. This is the court system. This isn't us having a happy dance. This is justice. These are the wheels of justice. Sometimes they move very slow, but the wheels of justice found her guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of all the charges. And I didn't think they were going to get guilty verdicts on all of them. But when they closed up, when I watched the closing with the female uh, district attorney and the male, when I watched the two of them, you know, bring it together, 
that's when I had a, a, a good feeling about it. Absolutely. Um, you know, so, again, <clears throat> the straight, <clears throat> the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Okay. That's what the prosecution gave the jury, but uh, yeah. the defense didn't give them that. They gave them th this bunch of serpentines all over the place, trying to explain these things. And then yeah. uh, it, it's funny how the interpreter went away. Uh, you know, you know, so they try to explain away her, her <laughs> lies in her three different interviews by saying she didn't understand English and um, she, you know, she used poor choice of words. And then they bring in a memory expert who has her own memory problems. And then they bring in a linguistic expert who's saying, well, if you speak multiple languages, then you think differently than other people. And, you know, trying to explain away all the inconsistencies in her various statements over the three interviews. OK, so I love the end when the prosecutor said coincidence, 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 coincidence. 30 times, 30 yeah. times. We played them on our last live stream. We played all 30 of those. And that was high impact for the jury. Uh, Maui Swift posted. Uh, this is true. Four hundred twenty three thousand uh, dollars is what it would cost them to get that surety bond from a bail bondsman. They don't get that back. The family does not get almost a half a million dollars back bond, surety bond. That's the fee that you pay a bail bondsman to get your client out, to get your family member out. So if uh, Traconis's family comes up with that six million, they're going to have to pay six million four hundred twenty-three thousand dollars, and that four hundred twenty-three thousand is the fee to you know to to get that and have that happen to be to have that guarantee. So it's pretty. It's a pretty steep one. Let us know in the chat by a show of hands if you feel that the guilty verdicts were just. Do you think the state proved their case? Well, we know now from the jury standpoint because the the juries are the fa the jurors are the fact finders, and they are they tell us whether the state put up beyond a reasonable doubt their case, and they told us today under no uncertain terms that they did. So just let us know in the chat by putting a one if you feel that this was uh, this was. You know, a just verdict. You were happy with this. Um, uh, put a two in the chat if you didn't think that they proved their case. And we respect all sides. This is a place where you can freely talk and freely express yourself. Uh, Clara D, thank you for the ten dollars. She she says, why would they give her bond when she could possibly kill herself? Now that's a that's a chance, right? Yeah, the the bond, gamble. yeah, the bond doesn't stipulate that. We're going to now babysit you to make sure that you're okay. If she's out, she's free to do whatever she wants. Now, I would think that the family would be with her pretty much around the clock. But look, you know, anything could happen. And you're right. If she gets a, a bond, there's a chance that she takes the coward's way out. That's always that's always a chance. All right, well, let's watch this um, when the, uh, the judge says take charge. And, you know, I... I this judge did a great job, um, I, I feel, in, in keeping the courtroom running. And uh, Judge Kevin Randolph, uh, really, I, I feel he did a great job. Let us know in the comments section what you th thought of the judge and how he took, how he, um, how he carried himself. I thought, he, I think he did a great job. What do you think, Ed? I did do very much so. Excellent. Still with the back rubs here. The court will then accept the verdict. The verdicts are accepted and recorded. Your Honor, I'd ask that the jury be polled, please. <laughs> I, I did that for you, Ed. Document, Madam. So she had to stick through this for eight, ten, I will ten minutes. I call upon you one at a time. Thank you. Ten Ladies minutes, and, and this is where she wound up. She was not moving. Thank God there wasn't 12 jurors. Let's continue to hold her. She would ask for that. Okay. I want, to, for I want to put this because this is the district attorney asking about the. If she comes. Yes. 
Your Honor, at this point, the state is moving uh, the court to revoke the defendant's bond or in the alternative, at a minimum, double it and make significant conditions upon her release if she were able to make it. Uh, she no longer entertains the privileges of the presumption of innocence as she has been found guilty by a jury of her peers of all six counts. Uh, one of those counts being a conspiracy to commit murder. The, there is also the a, another warrant being prepared currently for her with respect to the charges contempt. of contempt of court. And the if she is going to be making any kind of bond, the state would ask for strict conditions of house arrest and electronic monitoring, GPS bracelet. However, considering the fact that she has absolutely no ties to the state of Connecticut, has significant ties out of the country, let alone out of the state, uh, the state feels that this would be appropriate to revoke her bond in its entirety. So the state would ask for that. She's still rubbing her back. Yeah. Well, um, as far as I know, Connecticut does not have a no bond rule until the question is until uh, sentencing. And this is where appeal. it says so six that million would right not be Even within the purview of the court. But I'll just note for almost five years, um, Mr. Bonus has been out on a two point for at least over four years at this point, $2.1 million bond. Uh, she's appeared at every court uh, appearance that was required. Uh, she has been allowed to travel. The state has continued to hold her passport. Um, I am in possession of her uh, Venezuelan passport and I've had it since um, I've been in the case. And in any event, the United States does not have diplomatic relations with Venezuela, so she wouldn't even be able to obtain another one from that country. So I ask the court to maintain the current bond. She has a, a teenage daughter. Ed, you want to tackle that question? The question of? Keeping it real says, oh. I'm confused. Why is there any offer of bond? She already has a bond. You know, she had a bond. It was $3 million at the um, beginning of the trial. And she was, she had, uh, <clears throat> she had an ankle monitor on. She was um, free to, free to move around because she was presumed innocent, right? Now she's guilty. So now the prosecution wanted to revoke the bond, but apparently in Connecticut, everybody's entitled to a bond. Okay. Uh, so it can't be revoked. And so the, the criminal justice reform of 2020, <laughs> Who knows? But they wanted the uh, bond, the bond increased and um, additional uh, electronic monitoring and surveillance. Yeah, we just heard Schoenhorn, her attorney, say she was out on two point two million dollars bond, uh, mm -hmm. and the prosecutor asked for it to be at least doubled. Doubled. Now, what, what, was... Go ahead. What I don't understand is why was he allowed to keep her Venezuelan passport? Why wasn't that given over to the court? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should have been. It should have been. Uh, it, sh it should have been taken by the court. They should have seized it. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's listen to the judge immediately say six million dollars bond. He said that like I was just. I was so happy that I heard that because I knew it would be tough to come. No up hesitation. With not, no not equivocation. Even. Bam, yeah. six million. Prosecutor asked for it to be doubled. That would have made it like, you know, four, four, maybe you know, five, yeah. four point five million, four million, five million. Uh, that she is, the, and at least for the time being, remains the primary caregiver for her. She's appeared at all times. Her family all live in the United States. She's an American citizen. And I ask that the court not increase her bond and let her remain at liberty until sentencing. Thank you. With a bond set only on docket number ending in 1178. I would refer to the clerk, Your Honor. With uh, I could to answer the that question. The Sit first down. docket oh, the number. Refer to the clerk. Oh. We did a motion for Sit the down. You just told cases them. are closed out. <laughs> so everything's on 1178. Thank you. The court is going and, and to. I wish to know how much. There it was just, he was trying to answer the, the question that is can only be answered by the clerk. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not something for a defense attorney to a answer. I, like he's like, I can answer that, and he was just like, you know, no, <laughs> this is for my clerk to answer. But you know, I, I want to just say this: Michelle Traconis does not live in the state of Connecticut. The only reason she was in the state of Connecticut was because she was banging a married man, and I hate to put it that way, but she was a home wrecking whore in my eyes. That's how I see it. And you guys can crucify me for that all you want, but she was with Fotis Doulos, 
while he was married in 2017. Ed, there's no way to sugarcoat this. No, 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 no. There's no excuse. I keep saying for every for every action you take, there's a consequence. Okay, she chose knowing that he was married with five kids. She, she fully to have. Yeah, she carried on a relationship 2017, okay. 2018. And then he, he, she got murdered in 2019 by her husband because she hated her. She called her the C word. She said that she should be buried with her dog, the dog that she loved so much that died. She right. was not Miss Nice as her so family. Since we went there, let me just jump in with both feet, okay? Um, she made this decision. So that tells you what she thinks of Jennifer. That tells you what she thinks of Jennifer's children with photos. She yeah. doesn't give two shits about any of them. It's all about her and what she wants and what she needed. Okay. Right. That said, let's. So you see, oh, the defense attorney was making, oh, well, they just got the psych report, and the psych report said that Jennifer had issues, and and it's 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 looking favorable for photos, and he's going to get the kids. Now, at this point in their relationship, she she is living in Jennifer's house with Jennifer's husband and her kid. OK, she taking can't showers see with him. taking right. showers with him. She can't see. Um, she can't be around Jennifer's kids when photos is there. She can't be around any of that. Right. So she's living this this thing, uh, her life, and she's frustrated and she's aggravated. And shortly, OK, they get this little ray of hope around uh, Greek Easter. They, they get this report. But then the week after Easter, there is another custody hearing. And something happened at that custody hearing. We don't know exactly what happened, right? Because it wasn't favorable that they thought it was going to be because of that report, all right? That right. said, she is now pissed off beyond belief. We already know she said all those bad things about Jennifer. And we already know from her girlfriend that she's thinking about moving the Vail, Colorado, to get away from me. So she, in my opinion, she probably said, Take care of this situation, photos, or I'm out of here. Correct. And then and the then, plan, yeah, and the and plan then, gets developed. Here we go. And then 2019, she goes missing. So, um, and and is you know wound up as we know now, murdered in that garage. Uh, something really, really violent happened to uh, to our victim here. And and the bottom line is, is Michelle Chaconis, she knew about it. And there's no, uh, there's, wait a minute. Here. There's no, there's no question. Yeah, Anyways, there's, 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 let, there's no it. doubt that photos is just as wrong as she is. Okay. They're both wrong. A hundred percent. Okay. And he did the, he apparently did the dirty deed. He's the one that killed his wife. Right. Okay. Yeah. So she just helped clean up all of the bloody mess. So mm -hmm. let's let the rest of this play. And you know what? The, the sorrow that you see here and you see her down like this. It is because of her rich entitlement, and she felt like I could buy my way out. These two attorneys, how many defense attorneys do you see rubbing the back of their clients when they're convicted by a jury of their peers? How many times do you see that? She actually felt comfortable enough to lay her head on her defense attorney, Schoenhorn's left shoulder in court, in the court of law. She was laying her head on him. Like, come on. Give me a break, lady. There was on the other uh, cases as well, or no? Well, it's only one docket number. Right. The court is going to set the bond on one docket number. Yes. Six million dollars cash assurity. <laughs> he didn't even get to sit down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, the clerk, your Honor, uh, I could answer months. that. I wish to know how much there was on the other uh, cases as well, or no? Well, it's only one docket number. Right. The court is going to set the bond on one docket number. Yes. Six million dollars cash assurity. <laughs> he froze. He froze in his seat. He couldn't even sit himself down after that. I'm sorry. I, I mean, look, look. <laughs> that was just that was classic. Here we go with the handcuffing now. Now look, they're petting her. Petting a bond. Now the female court officer here is ready to take charge right here in the back. She's going to be the only one that handles her. Oh, Your Honor, I would ask if the court is going, since the court is setting a bond, that if she does happen to make it, we are looking for conditions. Yes, we'll it the following additional conditions, house arrest, electronic monitoring, GPS monitoring, 
and the passport has already been surrendered. I believe we need a date for sentencing, Your Honor, and a PSI. Madam Clerk, sentencing date. I like this part too. Initially, the twenty fourth of May. Yeah. Hold on one second. I don't know how the clerk didn't figure that out. Yeah, that was embarrassing. May 24th. <laughs> Perhaps that would be an inappropriate day, Your Honor. Yes, if we could, please do the week after. May 31st. Thank you. Good Lord. May 31st sentencing. I just like this, I like this part because this the female court officer right here, she tells her, put your hands behind your back. And she doesn't do it right away. And so she says it a second time. And when you see her hands go behind her back, if you're listening with headphones, you'll hear click, click, click. So we'll just play it one more time. Oh, let me pet your lower lower back. Oh, Your Honor, I would ask if the court is going, since yeah, the court is setting around. a bond, that if she, she does happen she, to make it. Now she doesn't do it yet. Conditions. Now she does it. The court will impose the following additional conditions, house arrest, electronic monitor. All right, the little details. <clears throat> uh, also, one other thing, when she was being carted away into the door right here, she asked this female or the male that was standing next to her court officer, if she could say something to her family and they told her, no, you, you cannot. Uh, and she turns back around in a disrespectful way, a fashion and says something in Spanish to her family. So let's take a look at that. Brain. Yeah, he's already telling this guy right here is saying everybody, you know, no, you can't communicate with a stand, but that's her father, her mom, and the rest of them that are in the courtroom now. He has monitoring. And the passport has already been surrendered. I believe we need a date for sentencing, Your Honor, and a PSI. Madam Clerk, sentencing date. Thank you. All right, here's the 31st where it sentencing. Did they take her glasses off on top of her head? Uh, like Stand adjourned. Looks like they were still no, there. I'll take, it, I'll take it in the back. So there you have it, folks. Um, Michelle Traconis in jail, found guilty of all six of the charges by a jury of her peers. And you know what? I, I'm not losing any sleep over it. And, and I say this. Otis Dulos took the coward's way out because when he was charged with murder, he decided to go in his own garage and kill himself by suicide from carbon monoxide, running his car. He damn well knew exactly what he was doing. And he said, I'm, I'm taking the easy way out. I'm not spending the rest of my life in jail. I had, I've had, you know, 6,000 thread cotton sheets that I slept on every night and I'm, I'm living the good life and I'm not going into jail. Uh, and he decided to do that. He felt that she was able to, going to be able to skate by paying her way with a high-powered attorney who happened to suck, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. What, what was your thoughts on that attorney? Ed, do you think he did a great job of representing her? No, not, not at all. I think he alienated himself from the jury. I think he pissed them off. I think um, his demeanor uh, and so forth was... Uh, crude and rough and you know i think the jury was probably put off by him as i was uh you know constantly nagging about small little minutia um things that didn't need to carry on he was again i was like at one time i was calling him spring butt because he couldn't keep his butt in the seat he was always jumping up and ejecting or jumping up to voir dire you know you know and it was just it was just needless okay um and, and Ed, I feel like strongly about this because it wasn't even just in the courtroom. It was the court TV, the the, the interviews outside courtroom. All, yeah, all, the, all, all of the people, the interviews, the live chatters that I was seeing. Listen, I went around to all of these, you know, live court 
you know, law and crime and all of these places. And, and, and it was, it was people were annoyed with this guy. Schoenhorn pissed the world off watching. Could you imagine what those jurors felt? Uh, how they felt inside that courtroom, listening to him delay and question. And uh, listen, defense attorneys, that's their job to question things, but not to the point where it's obnoxious. Um, hey, what do they say? Remember Beretta? Don't do the time. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. The time. Okay. They had a plan. They had scripts for their plans. They had it all worked out. There's no way she didn't know this. They, there's no way she was an integral part of the development of the plan to murder Jennifer and mm -hmm. then the subsequent cover up. OK, it was all there. And the prosecutors did a masterful job of laying it out. So you could follow the breadcrumbs from point A to point B. And the defense attorneys were trying to any which way they could to throw mud on stuff and create reasonable doubt. And it didn't work. Look, Ed, you got a comment here for the fan for the usage of minutia. LOL, minutia, that's my word. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for that. And and listen, how many folks are from the state of Connecticut in, in, in the chat? I, I want to just pull the chat and see how many Connecticut uh, folks are here. And I know Ali D is from Connecticut and she's dying laughing right now. But if you're if you're from the state of Connecticut or you were from the state of Connecticut, let us know by just putting your hand up and saying, hey, I this is my this is my state. Um I feel that the the district attorneys they did a great job in presenting the case. The judge did a great job of holding down the courtroom. The 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 experts that they brought in from the state and from the local PD, they did a fantastic job. And you know, look at you were watching this so closely from a forensic standpoint. There were some you know, look, nothing's perfect. You know, we're right. all human beings. Mm -hmm. So it, could there have been more tight, you know, a, a, a little bit more tightness as it pertains to evidence collection and so forth and certain things? Yeah. But at the end of the day, they got the job done, right? Yeah, they definitely did. And I love that the DNA expert from the lab he, barking at the defense attorney. Uh, what would you have them do? Lay paper down on the sidewalk and take a piece by piece out of the garbage can in public? I I love that. I would have did. The, I would have did the same thing. And and she's one hundred percent right. And I would have done the same thing too. You don't do that out in the street like that. Yep. Let me play a little uh, soundbite for the uh, law enforcement that were instrumental in bringing justice here. Oh, that's enough, Ed. I can't get you going. All right, listen. Let's um let's go over to the chat and say hello to everybody. Carly is here. Um, our our good friend and channel member, she said, I'm not sure Fotis would have gone through with killing Jennifer had it not been for um, what, killing Jennifer. I, I think he means, she means she would not have gone through killing Jennifer was not for uh, Michelle. Is she that what you meant, Kelly? Did you mean to say Michelle instead of Jennifer there? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm sure that she'll correct herself, but I know that she couldn't mean Jennifer and Jennifer. <laughs> so he wouldn't have gone through with killing his wife, Jennifer, at the time, had it not been for Michelle. And I think that's what she meant. Mm -hmm. um, let's look also to some of our friends in the chat that had sent Super Chats. And then I want to go to the interview with the Traconis family. May get some of us nauseous, but show of hands, how many of you have seen the interview with uh, Michelle Traconis's dad? Uh, thank you, Mary, for that super chat. Very generous. Jeff, I hope you're healing up well. She said, he says, gee, she didn't prairie dog like Paul Ferguson did. Uh, <laughs> I get that reference. We're not going to even go there, but thank you for the super chat. Uh, Roberts, uh, May McQueen, thank you for being a member for 10 months. Hi, uh, Duty Ron and Ed. Thank you. Cheryl, happy birthday to you as well. Cheryl shares your birthday as well. Cheryl. All right. Happy birthday. Uh, happy it's birthday, Cheryl. Birthday. It's your birthday. Barbara George sends in a super chat and says, happy birthday, Ed, and may God bless you always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen to that. Claire D07 says, why couldn't they give her bond? Why would they give her bond when she could possibly kill herself? We highlighted that already. Thank you for your support. Tara, $5 super chat. She says, when I saw her outside of the courthouse taking selfies with her boyfriend, it angered me so much. Can't buy class. I guess she's referring to Draconis, maybe? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Michelle. 
uh, I, I didn't see that, but I'm sure that that existed if Tara said. Thank you, Wendy, for the super sticker and the super love. Look who it is. It's Sergeant Riquez. A. Where's A -H. my empanadas? A-H. Let me give it Let me give it for A-H. Hold on. Bad boys, bad boys. What's he gonna do? Oh, what's he gonna do when you got boys? Thank you for the super love. Uh, Wendy says the poor kids. Yes. It, it's about the, the kids who are now being raised by their 88-year-old grandmother. Thank God she has the means to keep on the nanny who has been instrumental in raising these kids since this horrific event happened. Ed? And two families. And now Michelle left their kid without a parent. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Her kids suffer because of her choices like you Don't said the crime if you can't do the time exactly lady trucker 62 thank you for being a member love this chat we love that you're here uh becky thank you for giving giving gifting five memberships that's very kind becky l welcome to all the new members and thank you for your generosity uh lenora lenora uh heard that heard that i'm 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 brutal i'm really brutalizing her name um Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Ed and I, thank you. Lexi, thank you, thank you. Lexi, holy sweet mother of Jesus. She's been a, a member for 16 months. Her and with Lexi is Beamer, her sister Beamer 650. Happy birthday, Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy D sends in a $5 super chat. She says, she is in my town now in prison. York, Niantic. Niantic is a beautiful place. We used to play... Um, War at the Shores, Fourth uh, of July baseball, travel baseball tournaments up in Niantic. It is beautiful. What a what a beautiful, great place to be and a great place to live. Um, Lady Trucker gifted a membership. Thank you, Lady Trucker sixty two. Um, Liz G became a member. Thank you, Liz. Thank, Thank you for you. becoming a member. All right, let's let's go. Buy got something here. We got something here. Oh, shiitake mushrooms. Lynn Hall, if uh, Michelle Taconis tells where Jade, uh, Jennifer Doulos's body, let's not use that Doulos anymore. Jennifer, uh, body parts are? Jennifer Farber. Yeah, body body parts are. Do you think they'll go lighter on the sentencing? Uh, a little late now. It's too late. She, the ship she would have to make, she would have had to made that deal before the guilty plea. Ship, the ship has, her ship has sailed out to the ocean. It's and not only sailed, it was sunk. Yeah, she's she's done, done, done. Um, you know, could she have a moment of um, trying to be a good person? I don't think she has it in her soul to do that. No, no, she'll um, never admit. She will never admit that. No, no. Uh, and, and we're gonna listen. Let's let's pull the chat, Ed, because we're into the second half of the show already. Let's pull the chat. How many of you folks really want to see? Um, Michelle Traconis's family talk. It's just a short five. No, no, we gotta play it. We gotta play it. I, I want to see how many people want to see this, and how many people might say, eh, 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 "I'll pass." Put a one in the chat if you want to hear the family. They all came down as a unit. They were angry, and they were basically saying our justice system didn't work. Uh, Merv is said no. Uh, Spirit Spirit Detective says no. Uh uh. A lot of number ones. I only saw about three uh-uhs. Would so, it have been better in Venezuela? She would have got a better break in Venezuela if she was on trial there? I, don't I, think only, so. saw, I only saw three or four of these. Oh, hell no. I only saw three or four of those hell no's. Okay, let's give it a hear. I just saw something from Wanda, our good friend right here. There she is, Wanda. She says, give her. Let's hear it. Let's do it. All right, we're going to do it. Let's do it. All right, this is coming to you in 1080p. Let's see. Yes, 1080p HD outside the courthouse today. And Ed, you noticed something. He left his wife behind when he came walking yeah. down. Right? Yeah, who does that? There he is. Okay, he's, he's, he's with his daughter. daughter. Yeah. All right, we're not going to say a word to this. We'll just let it play. Good morning. 
So, Father. Good afternoon. Sorry. Uh, well, today I'm going to talk in name of my family. It's hard to me because English is not my first language. I came many years ago to this country looking for opportunities, freedom, and justice. And I moved my whole family here. I have eight grandchildren, American. <laughs> and today we are here devastated because it has been a tremendous injustice in the trial of my daughter. She's innocent and we will keep proving that forever. I forgive the juries, the judge, and the prosecutors, and God will prevail the truth. Also, I think that the influence of the media had been having tremendous effects on this case. Thank you. This is definitely a devastating day because my sister is innocent of all the charges that she was convicted of. And we are certain that she is innocent. And I know that only time will prove it to you guys. I know that everyone wanted answers. I know that maybe the state is happy that they finally convicted her or someone is paying for the price. But She's not the right one. We still don't know what happened to Jennifer. We're all mothers. Well, and we, we know. all love, as you can see, Michelle has been supported by us, her family and friends from day one. And we continue standing here because we too care to know the truth of what happened to Jennifer. But we don't know what happened to Jennifer. And choosing and putting my sister as the guilty person is not the right thing to do because she's innocent. So we will appeal and we will not stop fighting for her justice that this so country has apparently promised to us because as an American myself, this is an injustice completely. So my sister will eventually come out. She has to because she's innocent of everything that she's been charged for. I just want to, you know, like they said, I'm, I'm the mother. <laughs> devastated and she's innocent and I know that my heart knows that she doesn't have anything to do and the misery will continue because to put her in jail doesn't it's not that oh Jennifer appeared no we nobody still know what happened to her but she's not the one that knows she never knew she's innocent and that's it thank you my sister is innocent and this wasn't a fair trial. And you all know that. You all know, look inside your heart. The media from day one, day one, attack us, harass us. Okay, you, probably the moms out here know. My sister doesn't know what happened to Jennifer. We want to know. We pray every night for the five children i met them i know them they were they are beautiful kids so is my niece she was never separated from my mom from my sister my niece it's my sister it's all her world for my niece have some compassion i mean your heart look inside your heart we cannot live in a world this with this much hate my sister's innocent yeah. And this is wrong. This wasn't a fair trial from day one. Wasn't a fair trial. And you all know that because you are parents, you are moms, you are grandparents. Please look inside your heart. This world needs more love. And this is wrong. What happened to my sister today is wrong. It wasn't a fair trial. It wasn't. My last words go to Petros, Christiane, and all the five children. I don't recall the name right now. I personally have been praying for you mornings and night. I'm sorry about what happened to your mommy. 
but my sister is not the answer. And I hope that when you grow up, you find your own means to know what happened, to seek for the truth, to seek for real justice. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I have to stop it just for a second. I found this to be vile that she referenced to the kids. Like, I don't know, man. I, let me know what you think in the chat. But to go there because you're soured up that your sister just got found guilty on six different counts to say to, to what she just said, referencing the kids of Jennifer, we don't, Jennifer Farber. Right. It, it, I, it just got they, my blood boiling. They just said it over and over again. We don't know what happened to Jennifer. We don't, what do you mean you don't know what happened to her? Watch the trial. You, would you don't know. know what, what do you mean? You're, were you sitting in this, the same courtroom uh, and watching the same trial that I was watching? Okay. And, you know, somebody maybe somebody should have taught your sister not to get involved with married men with five children. Yeah. There's no mention of that. Okay. So there, okay. there is some moral and ethics wrong with your sister. If she has no qualms about being a homewrecker, okay, uh, you know, what else is she capable of? She wanted that lifestyle. Right. She wanted that rich and famous lifestyle, which was all smoke and mirrors, by the way, because photos was in debt to his eyeballs. Right. Okay. And, and it was not sustainable. Jennifer has no voice here. She was not doing anything wrong. She was the one who is the victim here. You know, Michelle was the homewrecker. And, and I called her something, you know, earlier. And, and I stick by it. She was a homewrecking whore. And I'll say it again. She was m messing around knowingly with a married man of five kids. Yeah. Did, did, I, you, did, you, did the parents teach her that? Did, they, did the parents teach her that? Not, huh? Did she miss that lesson? Not to do that? They're skipping over these, these points. These these really important points. Mm -hmm. and, oh, she's and, not a bad person. She's not a bad person. How she how their sister spent the day and the days that followed throwing out, helping Fotis Dulos throw out blood soaked bra, blood blood soaked clothing. Yeah. Of Jennifer Dulos. Jennifer going back Fox. and forth, going back and forth and and burning things. Okay. Give me a break. I don't feel Listen, she loved that. She loved the lifestyle. She loved the house, the house of the rich and famous. She loved all of that. She wanted it. But that yeah. was Jennifer's and photos, not photos and hers. All right. And she took that. She right. took that from photos. Right. All right. Uh, she took that from Jennifer, rather. And, and photos promised to the world, promised her all of this. It was all smoke and mirrors. And and she went she went with it. She, it's late May. You see the video cameras from that same house across the street showing the the male child that lives at that uh, the male um, that lives at that house in shorts and a t-shirt. Right. Yet she's burning something in the fireplace as she's going back and forth. It's not as if she was sitting down and ha having a glass of wine and reading a book to a fire in in a warm May day, May twenty mm. fourth. That's bullshit. Burning okay. evidence in a fire. Right. She's running back and forth and she's burning things. She had a they had a script. They had a script. Both of them had scripts. Okay. Yeah. This was all planned. It was all planned. And she was a part of it because she, she wanted Jennifer out of the way so she can get on with her life and be happy in Jennifer's home. Okay, and that and then photos would be happy because he got rid of Jennifer and then he would be given the children. Yeah. Look at this comment. Tegan says, even if it was cold outside, who burns a fire in five minutes in between trips? Yeah. So um, let's let the rest of this play, because then the defense attorney gets up and speaks about them not being able to come up with the bail and the bond. This is devastating. And I said since the first time, this is a tragedy for all the families involved and for all our children too. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Oh, there's the friend, the one that doesn't trust the police. Why they didn't interview the only person that was with Michelle the day that everything happened. 
why they didn't interview the person that was with her the day that she was first arrested, why the police didn't interview me after I was in the timeline, why they didn't interview me when I was in the warrant. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. Right. Because you were biased and you wouldn't assist the police unless they gave you a subpoena. It's a little too late anyways for her nonsense. Uh, it's just, just a moot point. Um, let me fast forward it because the defense attorney comes out now. Yeah, please. All right, so this is uh, John Schoenhorn. Well, to answer the question that hasn't been asked, I'm truly disappointed in this verdict. I don't believe that this was the correct verdict. I'm not going to criticize this jury that sat through six, seven weeks of evidence and reached their determination. I just happen to disagree with their determination. The, um, to answer another question that hasn't been asked, um, Michelle is devastated. Um, her daughter has been informed. Her daughter was not here. Um, her whole family is devastated. Um, I heard some of what they said. You know, I, I've been doing this a long time and, you know, it's not like I'm cynical or hard boiled about this, but I truly just don't see how the jury could have reached this verdict. We intend to first file post trial motions. One of them is going to be for a judgment of acquittal, notwithstanding the verdict. And there will be many, many issues uh, we'll present even before sentencing. We'll also be preparing for sentencing. There's a lot of support. Michelle has a lot of support. And um, people will be submitting letters and we'll be preparing for a May 31st court date. So if people have questions, um, I'll answer a few, although I don't really feel like it. Well, the first step is to file post trial motions for new trial where I list any number of reasons why the trial itself was not fair. Some of the issues predate the actual trial, going back to the hearings that took place in the fall, some of the, the rulings that go back a couple of years. So it's going to be a, a post-trial motion that lists all of those things. Normally, those are pro forma, meaning you file it just to file it. I believe that many of those issues have merit and only if those are denied and Michelle is sentenced, you then file an appeal. And the question is, what do you argue on, argue on appeal? In my view, it's not just whether there are any issues, it's which ones not to argue because of how many errors I think there were in this process. Is she going to bond out today? It appears that the amount is too high for the bondsman to be able to post without getting additional surety approval. So it appears she will not be getting out today. Um, we hope that she'll be getting out in the next few days, but it's not going to happen today. She is going to be going to uh, York and Niantic. Uh, I don't want to even speculate. Um, the maximum penalty has been set forth, but you know it's somebody with no criminal record. Um, she is not accused of uh, herself of of harming anybody but it's serious charges that she's been found guilty of so uh it could be uh several years let me put it that way <laughs> talk about minimizing yeah we're gonna get to the her max sentence in a minute well i thought that the question of when they wanted to hear back from uh clara duperon was favorable um, the way, though, that they asked the question, did, did um, the jury feel that you actually had to physically uh, touch any of the uh, items in order to be guilty of tampering? I didn't particularly like that question, but as I, I think I said yesterday, because the definition of accessory was separated from the charges of accessory to commit an offense, I thought it could be neutral. So I don't speculate and go, oh, that's a good question. That's a bad question. 
you know, you could sit there all night and think, well, why are they asking that question? It could be one person wanted to know. They just didn't know that the statute. I got to shut him off. I've had enough of this. Um, so what Michelle Traconis could be looking at, folks, in if she gets the maximum on all the charges, I have it written down real quick. Uh, on the murder, it's anywhere from one to 20 years, right? She's got no criminal history. Uh, she's never been arrested before. So she could really receive up to 20 years or as little as one year. I don't see that for the conspiracy to commit murder. The, um, the hindering prosecution is the 10 year max. Um, and then on the other charges, it's up to five years. So it's total max if it's run consecutively 50 years she's 50 going to be 50 years old um this year or if it's the minimum she could get 20 years um so that would take her into the 70 age 70 um so that's what she, that's what she's looking at i don't anticipate um the max on all of these things because of the reason of that she's never been arrested before she's got no history uh, but that's also going to be up to the judge, right, Ed? So no. um, he has the discretion based on what he reads in the case file. As we heard recently in Michigan, uh, ver uh, state of Michigan versus um, Paul Ferguson, he had no arrest history either, folks. But the judge looked at the heinous nature of the crime and he gave him the max, 30 to 100 years. Uh, he, he had never been arrested in his life, nor did Shonda Vanderar. So they got the max based on what the judge read. Uh, so your thoughts on sentencing, Ed? Uh, I think he's going to take into everything in, in consideration about her involvement in this. And, and um, yeah, she's a first-time felon, right? Um, right. Yeah. But given the heinous nature of what, what transpired, I think he's going to give her a stiff sentence. Yeah. I, I, I don't I, see her getting the minimum. I, I don't see her. I didn't say I'd see her getting the minimum, but I agree with you, Ed. She's not probably going to get the max, but she's going to get close to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Will 411 now, who's a great friend of ours. He's a channel member. He's got a great channel of his own, and he brings the facts. That's why I love his channel. Uh, 411 now sends in 20 bucks. says, I got to take off late dinner with the wife. Date night. Anywho, thank you, uh, you and Mr. Wallace, again, for your hard work and service to God and country. Amen, brother. Thank you, Will. Do, do you guys remember 411 when you used to be able to pick up the phone and dial 411 and oh, yeah. get information? Yeah, uh, I'd like to get a uh, number of uh, two Tony's Pizza over in uh, South Jersey. Uh, Ali D sends in a $2 super chat. And she says, I'm in New Canaan. Uh, in New Canaan Cousins, what was burned? Uh, please explain. So she might not be up to date on the case. I'll let you take that for Ali D. Ed. Okay, well, it wasn't in New Canaan that the burning occurred. That was up uh, by where Photos uh, lived at his house uh, that he used to live with Jennifer. But we believe um, Michelle Tuconis was going back and forth um, between the property that they were trying to sell where they had the red Tacoma and where um, after... Uh, photos killed Jennifer. He brought the red Tacoma back there and started cleaning it up. Uh, and she was assisting him in cleaning up um, the red Tacoma. And she said she was cleaning the house, but you know, the, the most of the things that she brought over uh, to the mop um, buckets, paper towels, sponges, so forth would end up in garbage that was recovered in Hartford. Um, now, even let, let's, let's, let's just say this, let's, let's, Give her the benefit of doubt. She didn't know Fotis was going to do this, even though there was a script, and even though she picked up the phone and answered it for that that staged telephone call. Let's 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 give it a benefit of doubt. She's going. He goes to the other property and sees the red Tacoma there, and you're telling me he's cleaning it up madly and handing her brown uh, soaked paper towels, which is blood, and she doesn't look in the car. She doesn't say, photos. what are you doing? She doesn't She doesn't realize that the, the interior of the truck is full of blood, okay? Um, Fotos' bike was in the back of the truck. Uh, what, you know, she, doesn't, she doesn't realize any of this, okay? Because yeah. she had that was the opportunity right then and there 
to get out of there and call 911 mm -hmm. and say, hey, I think my boyfriend did something stupid. Right. Yeah. But she failed to do it. She failed uh -huh. to step up to the plate and do anything that was remotely good here. And and that's the thing is that she just stonewalled this whole thing and said, oh, I I have no, I don't know what he, he was just driving me to, to, to go get a Starbucks. That is such horseshit. Right. Um, Debbie Carroll is in the chat. And let me tell you something about Debbie Carroll right here. I know you're looking to highlight something. So go ahead. Ed. No, 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 no. I'm not looking Debbie to highlight Carroll is saying hi to Pete, but she has been in every freaking live chat about the, this trial it, all day, every day. Debbie Carroll right here is a badass. I when saw her there. I saw her there. We we spoke. So kudos to to Debbie Carroll. Um, I'm wearing a piece of our merch, Ed, and I want to highlight it just for a second. And then we got to get to your birthday for a second. Um, let me go solo. So I'm gonna move the uh, the mic out so you can see it. So this uh, this says Justice Junkie, and it says Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed. So this is a, a sweatshirt. Let me move the mic. Justice Junkie. And it says Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. So nice. it's available down below in the merch shelf. You guys go get, pick up some of the merch that's in the merch store. I, I have a whole bunch of stuff. I got hats back here and all kinds of different things. Um, all right. So let's just say this. Um, this trial took a long time to piece itself together. It was at times very difficult to listen to because of the banter back and forth from the defense but prosecutor called up their witnesses had their experts come in and i, I feel like they did a really great job in putting this thing together and and giving it so that the jury can understand how this crime all unfolded and there was times when we all thought to ourselves it's not about Fotis. Why do they keep bringing him up? Well, everything that she did involved him. Just like now in the Rust trial, we're seeing the armorer on trial right now, and they're playing clips, and they're talking about the main person here. Uh, I hate to even mention his name, but he keeps coming up because he's a big part of what's going to happen next. And they have to keep bringing him up. So, yeah, this is um, this was this was difficult at times to listen to. There was some times during the day where I was just like, I got to stop, I got to put it down, and then come back. So, kudos to everyone that hung in and watched this. Here's just one small little piece, and then we'll wrap it up with a little birthday bash for Ed Wallace because it is his 29th birthday tonight. For crying out loud! But let's take a listen to this, folks after the mother of five vanished from her new Canaan home and after seven weeks of grueling testimony you need to tell us the truth justice for Jennifer Dulos in the eyes of investigators a jury of six convicting Michelle Traconis on all counts the defendant in anguish laying her head down crying this is a tragedy for all the families involved she's innocent and I know that my heart knows that a dramatic ending to a trial in which both families maintain there are no winners. Guilty on all counts. Michelle Traconis is convicted for her role in the disappearance and death of Jennifer Dulos. We thank you for joining us here for the News at Six. I'm Keisha Grant. And I'm Mike Heideck. Jurors handed down that verdict after a little more than two days of deliberations. Traconis could face up to 50 years behind bars on those six charges, which include conspiracy to commit murder, evidence tampering, conspiracy to commit evidence tampering, and hindering prosecution. We begin our coverage with NBC Connecticut's Kevin Geis, who was there when the verdict was read. Kevin, take us inside the courtroom. Absolutely, Mike Keisha. Good evening. That verdict came in and almost immediately a wave of emotion filled the entire courtroom. Now, of course, the dust has settled a bit since that verdict came in and just about all parties involved have had their chance to do an interview or issue a statement. And they all say roughly the same thing. There is no victory to be had in this trial. Ladies and gentlemen, you may return to the deliberation room. Six jurors finding Michelle Traconis guilty on all six charges she was facing. Traconis taken out of the courtroom in handcuffs in front of a devastated family. Choosing 
and putting my sister as the guilty person is not the right thing to do because she's innocent. Outside court, her friends and family maintaining her innocence and calling the verdict an injustice. This is wrong. This wasn't a fair trial from day one. Wasn't a fair trial. And you all know that because you are parents, you are moms, you are grandparents. Please look inside your heart. Defense attorney John Schoenhorn committing to fighting the verdict the jury reached ahead of sentencing and offering insight about Michelle as the jury deliberated and came to a decision. She is devastated. I mean, she she since it went to the jury, she hasn't even slept and she's just, you know, looked drawn and and, uh, you know, pale, you know, more so than I had ever seen her in all the years that, you know, in the four years that I've known her. The friends and family of Jennifer Farber Dulos releasing a statement following the verdict, thanking the judge, jury, investigators and prosecutors, but saying a verdict can't change the past. Also saying, quote, we've lost a mother, daughter, sister, cousin, and cherished friend. Jennifer's loved ones cannot bury her next to her father. The family and friends also noting there is no victory to be claimed, even after justice had been found. Adding, quote, today's verdict is a crucial attribution of accountability, not a victory. There can be no victory when five children are growing up without their mother. And also in that statement, the friends and family of Jennifer Farber Dulos also noted that they hope because of the amount of attention that that's and led from the courtroom. Right now, she's locked up at York Correctional in Niantic, where she will remain unless she's able to post bond. Her attorney says he's hoping that will happen in the next few days. If Traconis were to get the maximum penalty on each of the six counts, she would be sentenced to up to 50 years, to 50 years behind bars. But experts believe that's unlikely. Now, during our live coverage today of the verdict, legal analyst Jim Bergen says he thinks it will probably be fewer than 20 years. The way judges look at these is you collapse those counts that really are repetitive. Every murder has some tampering. Every murder has some hindering. People are trying to protect themselves. So essentially the murder is what subsumes all of it. Bergen goes on to say that another aspect that will be considered is Traconis's previous lack of a criminal record. But again, this is a legal analyst and he is a criminal defense attorney. And, you know, uh, he does not um, have a crystal ball. He's just basing it on his experience, what he's seen happen in the past. That doesn't necessarily mean that this judge here is going to say, well, you know, this is, I, I can't give her close to the maximum. Look, look at what happened in Norton Shores, uh, Michigan, in, in the courtroom, in the Muskegon courtroom. Uh, judge Matthew Casel, um, he threw the book at Paul Ferguson, the 30 to 100 years. Um, uh, this guy is, is not uh, a slouch, that's for sure. Um, six million dollars. Yeah, six million dollars. Boom! In, in, in like a second, like he he didn't even. It was just no hesitation whatsoever. It was just instantaneous. I mean, and Sean uh, his his reaction was unbelievable. Classic. I mean, he didn't even get to sit down. He he just froze when he heard the number. It was fantastic. Uh -huh. um, Ed and I want to just take a moment to ask each and every one of you to please give this video a thumbs up, share it onto your social media platform. Make sure you follow us on all things social media. One word, Duty Ron, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, here on YouTube. We're approaching like 255,000 subscribers. You guys are what makes this a great place. So Ed and I are so thankful and happy that you're here. But if you can, just take a moment to give it a video, a thumbs up. It's Ed's birthday, for crying out loud. Um, and he's here live with us. I said to Ed, take take a, take the night off. He's like, are you kidding me? There was, a, there was a verdict across the board, guilty across the board on this case, on Michelle Traconis. We got to go live. He actually pushed me to go live. You know, uh, I mean, because I was in the trial every day. Uh, as I said, I saw Debbie Carroll there and a few others. Uh and and I'm and I'm watching and Debbie, you can back me up on this. I'm watching the chat in that in that trial, and I, I couldn't believe how many people were supporting Michelle Traconis. I couldn't believe how many people were saying she's getting off. She's getting off. They got no proof. They got no proof. It's crazy. Uh, it, it really was frustrating uh, to to say the least because I saw the same thing. I was you know, albeit I was at work and everything, but 
I saw the same of what you were seeing. And, and to me, it just blew my mind that so many people are in support. It's like it's like um, you look at some of these cases like Chris Watts. He's got people writing him letters in jail telling him that, that they love him. Women. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy annihilated hey. his family. Hey, and the same thing is happening with um, with Brian Kohlberger. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's like a freaking cult. Okay. People are sending he, money for con in his commissary account. Right, and like they did with the with um, Don Wells. Don Wells. This, yeah, when, and the Sinoff brothers, the, the terrorists, the, the 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 younger brother when he was, they put him on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine and turned him into a rock star. And then people were sending him marriage proposals and all this stuff. Crazy. All right, I have um, a little birthday tribute that Kristen put together, our producer behind the scenes. I only looked at it quickly and. You know, we had limited photos of you, Ed, and I, I was trying to fish to get Margaret's phone number, and I, there was no way I could get it out of you. Uh, so I, I didn't have confirmation because I wanted to get some photos, extra photos from Margaret as per Kristen's uh, request, but I couldn't do it. Um, I couldn't do it without Ed knowing it, so I tried to backdoor it, but I think I got it, but I wasn't going to start sending a message to potentially maybe Margaret's number, but anyways... Uh, so we were limited on the photos, so I sent her what I had, and she put together this, and I want to put it up on the screen. This is happy birthday to Ed Wallace from the Crime Time with Duty Ron community, and I know all of you guys that are in the chat are wishing. And listen, if we didn't have Ed Wallace here, we would be half, uh, when it comes to education-wise on crime scene and evidence and forensics, we would only be what we're learning from the news, and that's not a lot ladies and gentlemen so we're so thankful that ed's here so let me play this and i'll be right back to you i didn't even listen to the music i don't know what she put behind it but let's let it rip we're we gonna get a copyright strike oh. guys i don't even know who that is gabby petito's uh yeah yeah at the uh golf outing over mm -hmm. in uh long island joey brooklyn was there with us so happy birthday to you, Ed, and that was nice. Uh, thank you, Kristen, for putting that together quickly. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everybody with the warm birthday wishes. Yeah, this was at the Gabby Petito Foundation fundraiser uh, in 2021. Actually, that day, Ed, if you could recall, we interviewed Joe Petito. Uh, we, fought, we were walking around, and I did a walking interview with him. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gabby's dad, and we interviewed him. That's available in our playlist. Uh, and then also you and I ran out to the car with Joey Brooklyn and Diane B. That was when uh, Casey White and Vicky White were captured. Um, mm -hmm. There was the the whole situation that happened with them. We ran out to the car and did that emergency live stream in my car. And then we went back in, said goodbye to the Petito and Schmidt family. And then we went home. Um we have a special guest, Joey Brooklyn, who's part of our family. He wants to come on and wish Ed a happy birthday, so I'm adding him in. Hey, Joey, you're Joey muted. Joey B. You're muted. You're muted. What's oh. up, guys? Good to see both of you. Ed, happy 21st birthday, as always. Okay. No, I'm only kidding. No, <laughs> no. Uh, 61, right, Ed? 61, yes, that's correct. Ex excellent, excellent. Well, anyway, I just want to say not only happy birthday, but on the duty run channel it's special because you're part of this channel you make it better you make this channel way better 
Am I right, Duty Ron? Am I saying, am I lying? 100%. I mean, what you bring to the table, people would beg and die for just to have your expertise and knowledge and friendship and everything. And I just, I'm so happy that you were able to join and I'm happy that it's your birthday. God bless you always. Long live Ed Wallace, 150. We'll take you. Amen. Grazie, Paisan. Grazie, Paisan. No, de nada, de nada. <laughs> and if you guys aren't subscribed to Joey Brooklyn's channel, he does great live streams. <laughs> He is a part, is extended part of this family. And the reason we're here, the reason I'm here is because of this guy. So Joey Brooklyn, I'll link his channel in the description. Go over and subscribe and follow all of his uh, goodness that he does. It's not true crime, but he is part of this family and he'll take you on some great, you know, tours of New York City and Brooklyn and going all over the place, Long Island, fire pits, you name it, sunsets, sunrises. Joey's on it. He's on everything, and um, he's got a, a whole bunch of goodness going on in his channel. So thank you so much, Joe, for being thank here. Thank you, brother Ron. I thank, appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for the kind words. Have a, have a great night. Take care, guys. Be All good. Right. Later, Ciao. Joe. So there you go, Ed. Uh, happy birthday. I love you uh, like a brother, and I thank you for being here. Uh, Traconis, guilty on all six of the counts. Uh, something that Many experts felt was not going to happen. Uh, I, I, I saw so many interviews about this pre, um, you know, pre uh, verdict. Um, the talking heads were all like, "Ah, oh, there's no way that they're, they're all going to, you know, every charge she's going to be found guilty. Maybe, you know, the conspiracy to commit murder. Maybe this. Maybe that. And boom, uh, right across the board. So I'm happy for the family. Uh, I'm happy for Jennifer Farber's mom and her children. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy that there's some part of justice being served here. Uh, Fotis took the coward's way out, and he's his his he's off the table. They don't even have to worry about him anymore. And now through this trial, her family knows. Jennifer's family knows that on, under no uncertain circumstances, Fotis Dulos murdered their daughter uh murdered their mom so um i think that's some of the good that came out of this trial although it was horrific to hear um it, it's it's not even a question anymore and before this it was a big question you know how did this happen what's the details we know it all right ed that's right that's right and what what happens what happens if she gets a you know an act of contrition and what happened there she has an act of contrition and comes to her senses and then gives up what she knows. Then what's the family going to say? Yeah. What's her family going to say who just got in front of those microphones and they were attacking the police, attacking the judge, attacking the jury, attacking uh, the prosecutors. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's, yeah, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to watch. Like, like I played those videos of, of uh, Traconis's family only because they did it to themselves. They made themselves look like fools sitting there sobbing and crying on national television because the jury of her the jury of her peers found her guilty based on the evidence, not based on their feelings. Like they blamed the media that this was an unfair trial from the get go. How do you? How is it an unfair trial from the get go? You know that if they if she was found not guilty, you wouldn't hear this this show this this show that we just saw you wouldn't hear that they would be like oh this was the justice at its best you know they're sore losers and guess what go ahead Ed. was there nobody in this family that could go to her and say what you're doing with this married man of five is wrong you shouldn't be doing this they didn't leave this man all right leave this man you shouldn't be doing this yeah. nobody Nobody did anybody do that? I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they attempted. But that tells you about who she is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Debbie Patrick, thank you for being here. Have a good night. All right. We're closing it up on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. Hey, Diane B, I just saw you in there. Good to see you. Uh, neighbor, right straight across the street. Um, if you're not yet subscribed and gave this video a thumbs up, please consider doing that. Uh, go and support us on all social media platforms. One word, Duty Ron. You'll see Duty Ron and Ed on all things social. One word. 
Um, for those of you who were here for the video, we appreciate you being in the live chat. Leave us a comment because in the comment section down below is a great way to still communicate with us after this live stream is over. It's what's great about YouTube is that after the uh, conversation ends on the live, you can continue it down below in the comment section. And I can tell you something, Ed Wallace scans those comments in the comment section like there's no tomorrow. He's a traffic cop when it comes to the comments. Ed is on it. Ed, am I wrong or am I right? I'm white on rice, baby. I'm like white on rice. If you if you took the time and effort like you are here today sharing your valuable time with us on our on our channel and you take the time and effort to write us, I'm going to take the time and effort to show how I appreciate you and write you back. There you go. And look at April. She's like, oh, I missed it. You're late to the party, April. But guess what? You can watch the replay. All right. Listen, thank you so much for being here. Happy birthday again to Ed Wallace. I will see you guys. Ed and I will see you on the next one. I think I may. The weather's supposed to be a little inclement this weekend. I think maybe I might bust out a members only live stream. So if you're not yet a member, consider becoming a member. And Ed and I will be like, <laughs> We're going to be doing that on a members only. Uh, all right, guys. <laughs> on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace, we wish you guys a good Friday evening and thank you for watching. Ed, you always got something to say at the end of these things. Yes. Since you broke out the Forrest Gump stuff lately, right? Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know. My mom always know. said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Stupid is what stupid does. Uh, I guess we could uh, point that in the direction of this case. Anyhow, folks, thank you for your valuable time and sharing that with us. Uh, spread the word about Duty Ron and myself. Uh, let's grow the family. Uh, our true crime family is growing by leaps and bounds, and we thank you for that. Uh, always, please stay safe, stay prepared, and watch your six. Amen to that, Ed. And sending strength, prayers, and positive vibes to... Uh, Jennifer Farber's family and all involved over there on her end, the nanny and everybody that's helping them out. God bless from New York. We'll see you guys soon. Peace and love from Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed.